As you watch this teaching, please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see this message. Welcome to today's program. My name is Rick Renner. I've been sitting right here waiting for this moment so we can open our Bibles and continue where we left off last Friday. And I'm teaching a brand new series, which is called Dream Things, Overcoming Obstacles to Fulfill Your Dreams. And we saw last week that the Bible tells us in Ephesians 1 verse 4 that we were chosen in Him before the foundation of the world. And that is just so glorious because it means none of us are an afterthought. None of us are here by accident. We were chosen in him. That word chosen is a translation of the Greek word ek lego. The word ek means out. The word lego means I say. When you compound the two words together, it means before God ever put the universe in place, he was already seeing us in the future. And when he saw us, he said, hey, you, out. And he called us out. He summoned us forth to be his very own before the foundation of the world. The word before a translation of the Greek word pro, which means long in advance of the foundation of the world. And the word foundation, the Greek word kataboles. The word kata describes something going downward. The word boles means to throw or to hurl, which means before God's word ever hurled the first layers of the universe into their places, God already saw us. He said, hey, you, out, I want you. He summoned us forth and he established works that we are to walk in according to Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10. So not only are we not an afterthought, we're not an accident. God has specific things designed for each of us, dreams, callings, which he has placed in our hearts that we are to walk in in our lives. But the dream thieves of life will try to stop us from doing it. And that's why I'm teaching this series. And today we're going to talk about sustaining the fire of God in your heart for whatever it is that God's called you to do. But please order this and remember that it comes with a study guide. And right now we're offering you my book by the same title, Dream Thieves, Overcoming Obstacles to Fulfill Your Dreams. But please, if you need prayer, call us right now. We're waiting for the phone to ring or send us an email. And the moment it shows up in the inbox or the moment the phone rings, we're going to release our faith for Jesus to step into your life to do something magnificent. And he really will. He's just waiting for us to get into agreement and to ask. So give us a call or send us an email. But let me read this to you from page 84 in Dream Thieves. The main goal of all believers should be to find God's plan for their lives and then pursue it with all of their might and strength. Doing God's will and fulfilling the purpose for which we were born must be our greatest desire and our highest aspiration in life. And then God said to Jeremiah, and this verse is just amazing. Listen to this, Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5. Before I formed you in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest out of the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. All of that was before he was even formed in his mother's womb. Or the apostle Paul wrote in Galatians chapter 1, verses 15 and 16, God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the Gentiles. Both of them knew God chose them, ordained them, and even anointed them before they were ever formed in their mother's wombs. And my friends, that's true of you too. You're not an afterthought. You are not an accident. And both Jeremiah and Paul had a determined attitude to do something great by fulfilling the purpose for which they were born into this world. And one day when your race is over on this earth, the same should be said about you, that you lived to do what God wanted you to do. Is there any greater aspiration than this? Wow. Hey, I'll be back in just a moment, and we're going to really dive into this teaching today. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. Hey, reach for your Bible. We always use the Bible in this program because we believe that where the word of a king is, 
there is power. And if you're a partner with this ministry, you're helping us take the teaching of God's Word to people all over the world. But we always use the Bible in this program, so reach for your Bible. And today I want you to open your Bible to Proverbs chapter 29. But let me read this to you from page 85 in Dream Thieves. Listen, there's something about knowing God's plan and purpose for one's life that gives him direction and provides a bullseye to aim at for the decisions he makes in his life. And without this sense of direction, people have a tendency to flounder and wander aimlessly through life. This is precisely why Proverbs 29 verse 18 says, where there is no vision that people perish. And the New International Version says, where there is no revelation, the people cast off restraint. What's the difference between a vision and and a revelation. Well, when you get a vision for your life, it gives you a revelation of why you're here and what you're supposed to be doing. But the NIV says where there's no revelation of this, the people cast off restraint. And the words cast off restraint paints a picture of people with no goal, no sense of direction, no purpose, no driving motivation, and no bullseye to target with their lives. And because they don't have any sense of destiny, they cast off restraint, which means they wander from one thing to another in the way that they live. And this is why the Apostle Paul wrote so clearly in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 24 to 26. So please turn there in your Bible. Listen to what he wrote. Know ye not? And the Greek is so strong. It says, don't you comprehend? Have you not gotten it yet? It was nearly like he was trying to reach out through the pages of the Bible to grab hold of his readers and us and shake us up and say, don't you get it? Have you not comprehended it yet? Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but only one receives the prize. So run that you may obtain. <sighs> And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, by the way, the Greek word adelos, with no aim, with no sense of direction. So fight I, not as one that beateth the air. But I want you to notice that Paul says, run that you may obtain. The word run is a form of the Greek word treko. The word treko means move your feet as fast as you can move them. Your feet should be flying. Your feet should never hit the ground. It pictures a runner who has determined that he is going to get to the end before anybody else. He's moving his feet as fast as he can. And Paul says, run that you may obtain. And notice he doesn't say try to obtain. He says, run that you may obtain. Obtain what? The prize, the goal, the dream, whatever it is that God brought you into this world to do. And the word obtain is the Greek word kata lambano. It's a compound of two words. The word kata, which carries the idea of something that's dominating, conquering, or subjugating. The word lambano means I receive. But when you compound these two words together, the word kata lambano literally means to seize, to grab hold of, to pull down, to tackle, to conquer, to master, to hold under one's power, which means our goal should be to seize whatever it is that God has called us to do until we've mastered it and we have tackled it and we have not completed the task until we have really championed what God has called us to do. And one thing is made crystal clear in this verse. God wants you to obtain and fulfill your part in His glorious Plan. But for you to achieve that, you've got to do some running. You've got to do some moving. It's not just going to float in your direction. You've got to go after it. And again, Paul says, our objective should be to obtain. Now, in my own life, I've really taken this to heart. And when God asks me to do something, I am bound to determine I'm going to do it until I've mastered it, until I've tackled it. Sometimes it takes longer, and the longer doesn't usually depend on God. It usually depends on me, my understanding of the assignment, my willingness to do exactly what I'm told to do. And my friends, when we get into divine alignment with God, things move a lot quicker. We saw that in a previous program. But this word obtain paints the picture of someone who finds something he's longed for his entire life. Rather than lose it or pass up the opportunity to possess it, 
He pounces on it with all of his might, latching hold of it and seizing it with joy. The word also carries the idea of a runner who fiercely runs with all of his energy, straining forward toward the finish line. He reaches toward the goal as he passes the finish line. And this tells us that God intends for us to give it everything we've got to achieve what he wants us to do in our lives. My friends, our goal is to obtain, not to try, not to do, do a little. God wants us to continue until we have accomplished what it is that he wants us to do. So what does God want you to do? Go to school, get married, have children, have a business, go into the ministry. You can't just try it. You've got to run that you may obtain, which means you've got to be like a runner who never looks back, he never takes his eye off the finish line. And rather than approach this spiritual race lazily and half-heartedly, you've got to do it with everything that is in you and determine I'm going to do what God has called me to do. And Paul kept one thing very preeminent in his thinking. I must obtain the high prize, the high calling of God for which I was brought into this world. He lived with a sense of destiny. Now, some people have bigger dreams. Some people have smaller dreams. Some people dream to touch the world. Other people's dream to touch their city or to touch their family. It doesn't matter. They're all divine in nature. They're all given by God. And regardless of what our assignment is, each one of our assignments are so strategic for changing people's lives. And once we know what it is, we have to run with all of our might to obtain it and do whatever we have to do to obtain it. For example, Paul told us in Acts 18, verse 3, that if he had to get a job to do the ministry, then he'd get a job. We read in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 20, that if it meant he had to become a Jew to those that were Jews to reach them, then that's what he would do. He told us in 1 Corinthians 9, verse 21, that if he had to be like those without the law to reach those who were without the law, then that's what he was willing to do. We read in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 22, he was willing to be all things to all men that he might win some, which means his number one goal in life was not his own creature comfort, but just doing whatever he had to do to achieve the prize. You have to live that way. You have to run, run, run that you may obtain. I cannot begin to tell you, my friend, how important this is. But there is one more dream thief that I did not mention last week. And this dream thief will stop you dead in your tracks. You say, what is it? It's the dream thief of neutrality. Neutrality. What is Neutrality. Neutrality is one of the worst enemies you will ever face in your life. Hmm. So what exactly is neutrality? Well, let's turn to Hebrews chapter 6, verse 12, where we find this word. And in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 12, the Bible says, that ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises of God. But notice he uses the word slothful. For years, I thought that the word slothful meant to be lazy, but it does not mean to be lazy. The word slothful is taken from the Greek word no thrust. Now I want to read to you from my notes because this is quite a word. The word slothful, the Greek word no thrust, means to be slow or to be sluggish. It's something that's lost its speed or lost its momentum. It conveys the idea of something that has lost the drive, thrust, impetus, pace, and speed that it once possessed. It's the idea of one whose zeal has now dissipated. It denotes a person who's become disinterested and whose zeal has been replaced with a middle of the road, take it easy mentality. It is the idea of one who has a lethargic, lackadaisical, apathetic, indifferent, lukewarm attitude toward life. It depicts a non-achiever or a non-achieving attitude. And Hebrews 6 verse 12 tells us that we are not to be slothful. Well, when do people become slothful? People become slothful usually when they get tired. 
when they've waited and waited and waited and waited for their dream to come to pass. As I've told you, the dream thieves begin to assault their mind. First, the dream thief of time says, just give it up. You've waited long enough. If it was going to happen, it would have happened by now. This is just a fantasy. Let it go. Dream thief number two is the voice of the enemy who says, you're crazy. You've dreamed this up. This is not really a word from God trying to get you just to release that dream and let it go. Then dream thief number three, the voice of your friends who are concerned about what you're about to do. So they try to give you a more balanced approach and talk you out of your action. Then there's the voice of your family who really loves you and they don't want you to make a mistake. And if you get beyond all of that, then you come to dream thief number five, which is neutrality. When you just get so tired that you lose your pace, you lose your momentum, you kind of become indifferent. And my friends, Jesus does not like indifference. We see an example of this in Revelation chapter 3, verse 15, when Jesus dresses, addresses the church of Laodicea. And in the church of Laodicea, they had become lukewarm, lukewarm. He said, I have something against you because you're neither cold nor hot. You're lukewarm. That word lukewarm means you've lost your fire. You've lost your temperature. That's really what it means. And in the following verse, Jesus said, this is so disgusting to me because you're lukewarm. I'm going to spit you out of my mouth. That doesn't mean they're going to lose their salvation. Let me tell you where that comes from. In the city of Laodicea, there were pipes which came from Colossae, which brought them cold water. There were pipes which came from Hierapolis, which brought them warm water. And in fact, it was the first engineering system of pipes like this ever in history. And they were so excited about it. But by the time the cold water came from Colossae, by the time the hot water came from Laodicea, it came so far through all those pipes that by the time it reached Laodicea, it had lost all of its temperature. It was just lukewarm. And in fact, because of all of the minerals in the pipes, when the people tasted it, it was so disgusting, they spit it out. That's where this comes from. And now Jesus says, when I partake of a believer that has lost his temperature, he's no longer cold and refreshing to others. He's no longer hot and on fire for God, but he's just become putrid. He's become lethargic. He's become lackadaisical. He's lost his momentum and lost his fire. Jesus says, this is just sickening for me to taste. And my friends, this is a word which we need to take to our heart. This is why we must sustain the fire of God in our heart. That means we got to read our Bible. We got to pray in tongues. We got to surround ourselves with people of faith and do anything we have to do to maintain our zeal and our passion. A person in this condition who's become lukewarm or neutral has lost his zeal, passion, and conviction for the vision or goal that once meant so much to him. Now he doesn't care one way or the other, and he isn't moved by his convictions the way he was once moved. And though he's still inclined toward that dream, he no longer pursues it the way that he once did. He is no longer running toward it. But my friends, you do not have to let loose of the fire of God in your heart. There's something you can do to stir up the fire. We're told that over and over in Scripture. The Apostle Paul said to Timothy, stir up the gift of God which is in you by the putting on of my hands. He was telling Timothy to stir it up, which means if your fire has begun to go out, there's something you can do to re kindle the flames. But let me read this verse, Hebrews chapter 6, verse 12. That ye be not slothful, that ye be not neutral, really would be a better translation. That ye be not neutral, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises of God. And notice in this verse, he mentions faith and patience. He does not say that you through faith and faith and faith and faith and more faith and more faith and more faith may inherit the promises of God. He says through faith and Patience may inherit the promises of God. And in the next program, we're going to see faith and patience 
is a marriage made in heaven. And when these two come together, it's like a husband and a wife who have a sexual relationship that produces a child. When faith and patience comes together, it always produces the promises of God. And the Bible is filled with examples of individuals who had a dream, they had a word, they had a spark of faith to believe, but it took time for that thing to come to pass. Faith was very required because that begins it all. Faith is the initiator, but faith has to be sown into the womb of patience. And when faith and patience work together, here is the winning combination that always produces the promises of God. And that's what we read in Hebrews 6, verse 12, that you be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. But remember, neutrality will wipe you out. And this is why we're told in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23, let us hold fast the confession of our faith without wavering. Hold fast. You got to lay hold of it. You got to sit on top of it, put all your weight on and just decide nothing is going to steal this away from me, including me. I'm not going to allow neutrality to knock me out of the race. You have to obey the words of Paul in 1 Corinthians 9, verse 24 to 26, when he says, run with all of your might that you may obtain. And my friends today, as I've been speaking to you, if you have said to yourself, well, I guess I've become a little neutral, that it's time for you to stir up the gift of God on the inside of you. And in the next program, I'm going to tell you how to do that. Please don't miss tomorrow's broadcast, but I'll be back in just a moment. And I really want to pray for you. Many people start out with a God-given dream and a passion to see that word from the Lord fulfilled in their lives. But the longer it takes for the dream to come to pass, the less their hearts burn for it, until sadly they release God's dream for their lives altogether, letting it slip out of their hearts and hands and into oblivion. You need to know as you pursue your dream that you'll encounter dream thieves that will try to steal the dream from your heart. And in this 10-part series, Dream Thieves, Rick Renner will show you how to identify these dream thieves and how to overcome each of them. In this series, you'll learn how to hold fast to the dream God put in your heart, how to identify dream thieves that come to steal your dream, how to come into divine alignment with God's plan for your life, how to take steps to fulfill your dream. This practical and helpful 10-part series is available in digital or physical format starting at just $20. In addition, we're also offering you the 254-page book, Dream Thieves, for $15. As you read this book, God's purpose for your life will be so stirred up in you that you'll put questions and fears aside and begin to aggressively pursue what God has been telling you to do. Don't miss these exciting offers, the series Dream Thieves and the updated book Dream Thieves. Call the number on your screen now or go to renner.org to order. Call or go online now. Think you know the Christmas story? A babe in a manger, three wise men, and a few lowly shepherds. But did you know that's just part of the story? In Rick Renner's timeless new book, Christmas, The Rest of the Story, Rick uncovers the stunning details of the nativity story you've never heard. Like how many wise men there could have been, how far they would have traveled, and why Herod was troubled at the news of the birth of a new king. When I was growing up, I heard the same Christmas story year after year, and I loved it. But when I got older, I found treasures in the Christmas story that no one had shared with me. And that's what is in this book, and I wrote it to share with you and for you to share with those whom you love. When you call or go online right now to pre-order this book for just $35, you'll receive the timeless story of Christmas, now beautifully told in this landmark Christmas keepsake. Through its detailed watercolor illustration, Christmas, the rest of the story, invites families to explore the true meaning of Christmas as they interact with the story across the stunning hand-drawn pages. Bound in a hardcover, large format book, you'll create a family tradition that will last for generations. Great as a gift or for enhancing your own traditions, pre-order the book today, Christmas, the rest of the story, for just $35. Call now or go to renner.org to order. Don't miss this special Christmas offer.
this is Rick Renner and my friends right now we're in the very middle of our ministry expansion project. It's three phases. Phase one was building the new studio in Moscow. You helped us do that. Thank you. Phase two was finishing the interior of the studio. You helped us do that. Thank you. Now we're in phase three, which is retiring the debt on the ministry headquarters in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Our ministry has never had debt. The reason we've been able to do what we've done is because we've never had to service debt. When we built our building in Riga, we did it cash. When we built the building in Moscow, it is amazing that we were able to do it with cash. And now we want to retire the debt on the Tulsa headquarters building so we can liberate all that money to really take the teaching of the Bible around the world. You know, it's never about buildings. It's about having an anchor where the Word of God can go forth. And in that Tulsa facility, we're taking calls from people who are literally calling us from all over the world. And from that facility, we're producing TV programs, social media, we're fulfilling orders for books and giving away thousands and thousands of different resources to people who are reaching out to us because they believe that we provide teaching they can trust. And it's very important that we retire that debt as quick as possible because it will liberate funds for the preaching of the word to the ends of the earth. And that is what we're called to do. And today I want to ask you to please continue to be a part of our giving team so we can retire the debt on the Tulsa building and then we'll be finished with the ministry expansion project. Thank you for your prayers and thank you for becoming a part of the giving team. My friends, I want to tell you, run that you may obtain. What is it in front of you that God wants you to do? What were you brought into this world to do? And by the way, there are short range goals. There are long range goals. Just reach for the one that is in front of you. The Holy Spirit will help you, but you've got to run. That word run again, the Greek word treko, which means move your feet with all of your might. You've got to move in the direction of doing that thing. It's not going to come to you. You've got to put forth effort and your desire should be to obtain, not stop until you've tackled it and mastered it and made it your very own Say amen. You can do it. You have the power of the Holy Spirit, which will help propel you forward. Oh, but I'm speaking to you from my new series, which is called Dream Thieves. Please go online or give us a call right now to order yours. And remember that it comes with a great study guide. Everything in these teachings is also in the study guide so that you can read it while you're seeing it or while you're hearing the series. And we're offering you right now my book by the same name, Dream Thieves, Overcoming Obstacles to Fulfill Your Dreams. Please order this and devour it from the beginning to the end. It is so full of practical help to get mo you moving in the right direction. But Father, we thank you that you really brought us into this world for a reason. We're not an afterthought. No one is an accident. Lord, if you've called us, then you've got a plan for us that is glorious. Forgive us for not stepping into it yet. Lord, I pray for my friend that may not know it yet. I pray that he or she would be awakened to your plan and then would run to obtain it. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Hey, be sure to let us know how to pray for you. You can call us or send us an email. But until tomorrow, remember Ecclesiastes 8.4. It says, where the word of a king is, there is power. Thank you for watching this broadcast. For more information on product resources or to learn how you can partner with this ministry, please connect with us at renner.org. Also, please be sure to visit us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. If you enjoyed that teaching, please like, subscribe, and comment so more people can see it.